Today's youth need teachers, volunteers, and most of all, well, they need you. I'm Doug Edwards, and I'm going to be talking with real youth mentors and students to give you the knowledge you need to be the best youth worker possible. This is Youth Worker on Fire. Just to catch you up a little bit on where we're going or what's coming up, if you're listening to us consistently, and some of you are because you know me and we've known each other over the years, and thank you for doing that. That means a lot because we need your prayers. Thank you if you have just joined us over the last year, few months, last week, yesterday, (laughs) because this podcast We're there to help encourage people to go further, further in student ministry in particularly. That ministry comes through full-time paid people, part-time paid people, volunteers, part-time volunteers, full-time volunteers. That sounds crazy, but there are. There's those who can give more time and, and more effort than others that are called. But over the last few months, we've recorded a few people. And they'll come out periodically as well as some of these short audios that I send you out. Who is coming out in the near future is, in fact, last night I recorded Andy Howard. Andy's story, amazing. Every one of these men and women's stories are just uh, unbelievable to me. You need to hear them. They're, They're going to encourage you. They're going to help you see that you can go further than you've gone in life, in hopes, in day to day through paying Sammy Smith, incredible ministry, very positive stuff that you're going to hear from Sammy. He's going to talk about the positive. I bring out some of the things, the pains that he's gone through in his life, just so people can relate and understand that where his ministry is. But Sammy, S-A-M-M-I-E Smith, great track star in high school, Florida State football, Miami Dolphins, one of their number one running backs, then uh, Denver Broncos career-ending injury, been with Fellowship of Christian Athletes for quite a while now, and went from Lake County, Florida, and then went to Ole Miss for about five years, and now he's coming back. And so you'll hear all that in the interview and some innovating things. Mary Loma, you know, I pray for things uh, because of the 40-day 40 40 day prayer challenge. I pray for a holy surprise. And sure enough, uh, Mary Loma was one of those holy surprises. She wrote a, or sent me a note through a text and said, hey, here's a speech I, that I wrote out to give at this uh, particular group that I'm with that we speak, you know, or prepare our speeches for public. And it was about her time with me a couple of years that she spent as a volunteer staff. And then how her ministry took off from there as a volunteer. She was a nurse for many, many years. Her episode's coming up in her story. Also, Tom Yohi will talk about his daughter and where she is now. She's famous for a movement that was started on her behalf by some friends called To Write Love on Her Arms. But tonight, as I was praying and, and thinking about what I would say to you, I started praying and talking to the Holy Spirit. I don't know where you are theologically, where you are heart-wise with all of those things and how God speaks to you, but I spoke directly to the Holy Spirit going, I know you and the Father are one. You and the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, are one. Everything that they've done, you were there because you are them, the three in one. (laughs) Uh, You know, if your theology isn't there, uh, you know, that's where my theology is. And the, the Holy Spirit is who Jesus sent to us when he ascended to heaven. So, And I have to wake up sometimes and think, you know, Spirit, you were there because you and the Father are one. You and the Son are one. You're all the same. And you were there, and you speak directly to me. You're in me, but you were with Adam and Eve when they were created. You were with Noah. Uh, all those years with the ark and all of the struggles throughout the world, you saw that. You were with King David and Solomon. You were with Elijah and Enoch and 
Abraham and all these. I'm, I'm going backwards and forwards chronologically. Uh, so for those of you who like things in order, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty ADD. You were there with, with the apostles, with, with Peter, you know, all of his blunders and, and growing to be the great man of God that, and saint that he is and was and all those things. So Holy Spirit, you have all that knowledge for me. I know I can look a lot of those things up in the Bible, but you speak directly to me. And I'm going to say to you, he speaks directly to you. All the knowledge that is God's is in us if we'll tap that resource, which is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that's inside you, that's with you since you asked Jesus into your heart. And that's, I I love what this one guy said. I can't even remember his name, uh, but he used to do a Bible study and had written some great materials for student ministry, discipling. When he would speak to us, he said, when I would have some student from my youth ministry come in or their parents and them, and he said, I would say to them, you know, after they would tell him their problem, he said, you know, I... I don't have the answers to all of your problems. I'm not the solution. He said, but God is. He has the answers to all of your problems. So you've come to me, and I'm going to take you to him and help you to be able to use him as your source and resource. And how freeing is that? If you're in any type of ministry or you're in any part and type of life, and throughout all of my interviews, that theme, not consciously usually, but that theme is throughout every interview and and every episode through Youth Worker on Fire. I am not the source. God is the source. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. And he's inside of us. So this week, as you go, start saying to God, saying to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that's in you, I know you know everything. And I know that you need to tell me everything I need to know. I need to take the steps you want me to take in my life, in my family, in my business, in my ministry, or which is not mine anyway. It's all given to me by you. I don't have the answers to the struggles and problems I'm going through, but Spirit of God, you do. And this is one scripture I'll give to you. 2 Corinthians three seventeen. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And it goes on after that verse, and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. I remember being on a work site with my dad. My dad was a great contractor and builder, and I remember being a Christian maybe a, a couple of years and not understanding this, the glory of God that shines through those who are believers, who are in love with him, who he's filled uh, with the spirit and uh, through acceptance of Jesus Christ. And so I'm on this work site. I hadn't said anything about God and I seldom did, especially back then. I I wanted so badly to tell people, and but I was very timid and But this one worker came up to me and he says, there's something different about you. You know God, don't you? I don't know if those were exact words, but that was his intent. He said, either you know God or you're a Christian, you have something like that. And I was stunned and I said, "Well, well, yes. And it was one of my first inclinations of what this is talking about, that we, we reflect the God who's in us, and people see something different. They may not be able to pinpoint it, whether they're believers or not, but they'll want to be with you, be with us, because there's a sense of peace. What does God bring? The, the fruit of the Spirit, 
peace that passes understanding, peace, love, joy, hope, and the list goes on, the nine fruit of the Spirit. And so know this, that the Spirit of God brings freedom. And the question you and I have to ask ourselves every day is, are we free today? In other words, have we let God have this day? Have we let God have this moment? Are we in charge or is he in charge? And one verse, uh, one thing that I prayed that came from Isaiah, I prayed it with Andy last night before we recorded, and that was, God, your words in our mouths. Not my words, not Andy's words, but you speak through us. Put your words in our mouth so that whoever hears uh, this particular episode will be inspired that they hear God speaking through us, that they have a sense of your presence. It's always a lot better when the person, the God of the universe who knows everything about the universe which he created and everything about us and every individual that's listening to us is that when he is in charge, things happen and things change for good. So Youth Worker on Fire, all of you friends who listen to us, listen to me and and the people I interview, have an amazing day today and also have a, an amazing energy and reflection of God that's attracting other people. And I pray that his peace is on you, that his favor will be on you. And you guys go and be the people you were intended to be, the ones God made you to be. Have a great day. See you next time. You've been listening to the Youth Worker on Fire podcast. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think. Stay tuned for more informative episodes.